For me, you really deserve a big round of applause. Interview, so you did great. Really, you did a job. Thanks a lot. For 100 times in your life. So, good job. You did perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs>a lot in in techniques in replacing animals they are still needed for certain purposes and that is why the three hours principle is of such great importance in further replacing animals and when animals have to be used to do so in an ethical correct way I think that's an interesting discussion and the earlier you start thinking about it you position yourself because in the end it is society which determines whether we can or can't do animal experiments in science or let's say under which project visits, under which circumstances we can actually do an experiment because in principle it is cruel to harm an animal, there must be a good reason. And that's a very interesting discussion I think also for young people um, because they can understand that there is things which are not black and white. Um, these are things where you can develop an ethical position and you can develop a pragmatic position of getting new drugs and other things. Yeah. Our researchers use animals in science because they want to make sure that the um, drug, medicine or whatever uh, food item um, isn't harmful to humans and they want to make sure that it works the way that they want it to work. So the project was three steps. First, we did a workshop, and the workshop was made uh, together with the European Commission and the uh, European School Net. And the idea is to, uh, to teach teachers how to educate kids about the three arts. And then the second step was to make the event where the different speakers uh, were talking about one of the different arts. After the event, the kids will gonna receive a manuscript about the different three arts, and the kids are gonna uh, act as a reviewers of the manuscript. The 3RCC wants to be the driving force in advancing 3Rs uh, in Switzerland, uh, both on research and innovation, but also on the side of education and communication. Reduce, refine, replacement. And replacement is replacing the animals with other options, maybe like cells. I, in particular, in my presentation, I presented, uh, I discussed the art of reduction uh, from the perspective of using imaging technologies. The imaging technologies allows you to look inside the animal without or causing minimal harm into the animal, which is really good because it means that we can uh, follow the animal from the onset of the disease and see the progression of the disease and how it responds to any treatment or any medication. Refinement is like trying to make it so that the animals feel less pain or are less stress. A lot of people, a lot of scientists are working together to make better science, but we are also working together to make sure that if we have to use animals, if we have to use animals, that the animals are always, always, always very well looked after. Let's say you inject the mouse or inject the rat and once it like, if they don't die, what do you do after that? What do you do with them? That's an interesting point. I think we really need to approach the children uh, with these difficult questions because there's no difficult questions, possibly there's difficult answers. But these are the reality and the working with animals, laboratory animals and doing research with animals is a challenging for everybody. And we, we shouldn't hide away from this, on the contrary, we need to be very open and we have the commitment by the regulators to be very open about it and we must talk about this. We must talk at all levels with the children, with uh, elderly people, with uh, our youngsters. Eh? This is a must and we need to promote this. So I work on all three hours theoretically, but practically I work mainly on, or I worked in the past mainly on refinement. So improving the welfare of animals involved in animal experimentation and reducing their suffering. Uh, I think refinement is when you do, uh, try not to harm the animals when you're doing the testing. So then the arm, animals like life wouldn't be in harm or anything. When you like do your experiments, how do you understand if the mouse is like not feeling good about it or feeling like bad about it? 
I'm relatively optimistic. Um, I think I have to be in, in my position and I think there will be a day where we can replace or reduce animal experimentation um, significantly. I'm not sure if that is soon or if that will be a complete replacement, but I think we can make a lot of progress. There's a lot of potential still to reduce animal experimentation and replace them with um, other methods. And for those animals that remain, I think we should strive to have the best living conditions. Replacement is when you basically stop using animals and use other things such as computer models and um, petri dishes with human cells and or animal cells. Since like they use mice and rats, they're not entirely like us so sometimes results from mice or rats are not going to be the same from results from humans yes. so that is one disadvantage um some examples of what could be used to replace are um, parts from slaughterhouses cells or and scientific or electronic devices that are similar I think the, it is important that humans, patients and consumers and their safety, um, they come first, but animals don't come second. It is important that we do our work in the most ethical way possible, in the least harmful way when we are deciding to use an animal, but that we always strive for really replacing it. Uh, we uh, also, uh, during the development of the project, we contact also Altertox. Alter Talks is a company that um, has done a lot of education uh, projects uh, in the past, especially with adults, but also with kids. So we approached them because they have, um, um, they, they could give us a good advice on how to uh, interact with the kids, and they give us a lot of advices about how we can engage the kids into the activities. So Alter Talks' uh, vision is to make alternative to animal testing uh, the new normal. Uh, to make uh, people better scientists and to make scientists' voice heard. The implication of Alter Talks was to take part of two activities after um, the speaker presentation. And during this activity, kids played a board game and went into the different steps to the development from the evaluation of an alternative method to animal testing. I think one difficult thing when preparing the presentations was to make the content uh, easy, understandable but still interesting. But the process actually was quite nice also for me because um, I could present my own research field a little bit with a little bit more fun and a little bit more pictures and graphs and comics. So that was really enjoyable. The students being involved in, in live events is the way that they can interact with scientists. We sometimes hold them on a slight pedestal that they are some kind of different type of human, but to be able to actually see that they are normal people and that they themselves could become those people in the future, I think has been a very valuable experience for the students. So when we were organizing the, the event, we thought that uh, Frontiers in Young Minds could be a perfect partner because they have been working for a really long time with, uh, with kids and they produce scientific material for, for young audience. So they were the perfect match for, for this project. So the vision of Frontiers for Young Minds is that we are providing not just open access, but intellectual access. And that means free, amazing science for all kids aged 8 to 15 all around the world. So they're both con core concepts and new discoveries. And we don't just publish content that scientists think is accessible for this age group. We actually involve our young audience as peer reviewers to make sure not only that it's accessible for their peers, but they are actually involved in the content and learning to think critically. Also, the, the, the good thing to have these uh, manuscripts is that it can be used also for uh, didactic material in the schools. And because the language is set up for kids, it could be really useful to uh, spread the, to, to teach the concept. I think it is important that kids learn about science in general. The peer review process obviously being a part of that and uh, to 
for younger kids, uh, but also for a general public to get a better understanding of how science work, um, I would say has an impact on the trust in science and, and to build that trust is of importance, uh, not only uh, among younger kids, but also for a general public. The journal which the students um, have been involved with, the thing which we like most is that they feel that they've contributed in some way that they are part of a, a bigger whole rather than what's just going on in the classroom. We as teachers can talk to them endlessly about how wonderful science is outside of the classroom, but by actually taking part in this process, they get to see it firsthand. And that for me is invaluable. We want them to learn to uh, understand the value of scientific validation of information and to also learn themselves to think critically, um, to be able to review the resources, do their own research, understand it and make their own decisions about what is being told to them. I really enjoyed the experience. Uh, it was really, really fun and very interesting. And if you're a scientist and you think you could prepare your content in a way that is interesting for kids, uh, I can really recommend to do that important to teach ethical principles early on uh, and that goes not only for three hours principle but also for obviously other principles ethical principles that we follow in society so I, I think this comes along with a, a larger package of um, ethics that the younger kids should be taught in school first of all to the children to the kids aged 8 to 15 or any other audience watching this video Knowledge is power. So you are already powerful in the world and you will become more so. So take this opportunity, take this knowledge and find out everything you can because it will help you later in your life when you are ready to become the scientists of tomorrow and run the world. Uh, the project is gonna keep evolving in the future to keep approaching uh, science and the 3 concert to kids all over the world.